Yeah, so, um, yeah, as far as I can tell, I, I still need to do debugging on it, but this um, <laughs> this is enough to compile, uh, this awk script is enough to compile the, in it, the uh, pre-fourth sources uh, into uh, a single assembly file, which um, will then successfully assemble with, uh, with now with GAS, with GNU Assembler. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. The um, it does it does currently crash when you try and feed it anything. So I think probably. Oh, I I also removed the dependency on libc. So I'm using Linux syscalls for um, uh, just because yeah. it was sh just because it was shorter code. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so I think um, my my current working hypothesis is either I've messed up my implementation of tail. Or I've um, uh, I've like messed uh, messed up the stack when I'm doing a syscall, um, mm -hmm. so I haven't yeah. had time to debug that because I I was out longer than I expected today. Uh, but, so, um, so you're running 32 bit or 64 bit? Uh, th 32 bit at the moment. I was uh, considering uh, a 64 bit. Um, yeah. So there 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 are hardly alignment restrictions in both. So, yeah. Uh, when you do yeah. the call and 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 uh, yeah, uh, I spend a fair amount of time uh, being and debugging uh, and uh, yeah, uh, these alignment restrictions. Yeah, I I figured if um, uh, if was it Peter's talk yesterday on mm -hmm. the test driven development? Uh, if mm -hmm. that had been before your talk, then I'd probably have uh, I'd I'd have probably had this debugged by then by now, but. Uh, uh, alas, it wasn't. So I just went. I just went in, downloaded the source files, and uh, um, and yeah, started started porting by hand. So yeah, that's, um, that's... So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll I'll make those sources available on GitHub and share the link in um, uh, in Mattermost um, when I have it not crashing. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, well, I'll say when I can compile seed forth with it, then I'll. Um, uh, yeah, then I'll, um, well, I'll, I'll make it available as soon as I can find my GitHub password and then yes. I'll, um, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll get it to the point where it can compile seed forth successfully. It's certainly the, the, the most, uh, comprehensive org program I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not the most comprehensive org program I've written. Uh, okay. Any stretch of the imagination. All right. Um, good to know. But yeah, it was, it was actually, uh, it was easier than I was expecting. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, there may, there may still be bugs in it, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it was actually a fairly straightforward conversion from the, uh, from the original G4. So, Glenn, fine, fine, fine. Glenn yes. could you please send me your contact details to Stephen at vfxforth.com? I need okay. an orc, I need an orc guru. Ah, okay. Yes. I will, uh, I'll send you an email. Um, uh, Excellent. Uh, sorry, Stephen at uh, with a ph ph at vfx.com. Well, uh, uh, vfx fourth. Vfx fourth. Given yeah. given that I have all his details, uh, Stephen, okay. if if Glenn is okay, <laughs> I can just send them to you. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be awesome. Yeah, if, if you could put put us in touch. Um, okay, uh, yeah. we we got a question by uh, Philip. How many how many lines of org is that? Um, hang on, just let me have a look on my, uh, I've got the pre pre, pre fourth dot org. Uh, it's 80, um, I, with, yeah, zero, yeah. zero comment lines and zero blank lines. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah, not, I'm, oh no, sorry, there's two comment lines. So yeah, I've 78 lines come, of code. Awesome. I've recently come to, to, uh, appreciate Ork again. Uh, I wrote all the, uh, the, the calculation evaluation uh, code for my diploma thesis with uh, Orc, and I'm ashamed to say today, c uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, Orc mm -hmm. is a surprisingly capable language. Yeah, um, it's very but... nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, the only thing that's really hard to do is recursion through files. So if you're implementing a, if you, I, I, I did actually write I started writing orc forth at one point, which was a much more complex um, uh, undertaking. <laughs> uh, and what what killed it was writing include in orc is virtually impossible. Um, mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. you can't. It's very hard to preserve the dictionary across recursive calls to files that you've read out of the current source file. 
So, Glenda, did you succeed in implementing Forth in in Orc? Um, so I've got uh, I've got a kind of I've got a kind of limited implementation um, called Orc Forth, but it's it's a very non-standard dial uh, dialect, and it lacks a whole bunch of like features, as I say, like includes. Are you um, saying so it's a bit awkward? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was so bad. I had to say. It. I, I mean, the worst thing about that is I wish I'd thought of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, you're in good company because uh, there's a, a lisp in Orc of fame, and uh, should you say, <laughs> it has been it has been done. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, fourth in Orc um, uh, would actually be a very nice uh, supplement to this. Okay, I might I might dig out the the old source code and see what kind of shape it's in, mm -hmm. and maybe make it more more familiar and upload it as well. Because uh... yeah, and start discussing. So so maybe we can uh, face uh, similar issues, and then uh, there the, the, there might be a solution in discussing. Yeah, because the um, the kind of the orcs tokenization is like very similar to forts. Uh, the fact that you get a, a line of code divided up into space separated words, like by default, gives you like a free 50% of a fourth interpreter. Mm -hmm. um, which is a really nice, uh, really nice feature of Orc for that. Uh, I, I, is anyone here familiar with said fourth? You're kidding that me now, right? By... There is no, set no, force. That's that's a, a, an actual. Um, it's a bit like preforth. It's a, oh, a okay. no runtime interpretation, direct translation to assembly, <laughs> um, and it's by I think it's by the same guy who did uh, retro. I think it was by the same guy who did retro. For John John Aaron. That sounds familiar. Mm, uh, let me. Okay. I've, um, let me just have a look at my um, collection of random forths. Um, <laughs> random customs, uh, where is it? Uh, well, I found Z-Force on, on samethwice.com. Okay. Um, I'll just put it oh on no, the screen. Ch 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 Charles Childers. Sorry, I was misremembering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, uh, yeah, there's there's some fun like scripting language implementations of Forth. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing mm -hmm. people are familiar with Bash Forth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That that's I think that's better known. Yeah, there's also Plunk Forth that does a very similar approach, uh, use, but uh, using visible letters as tokens, and uh, so you can actually type the initial program, the token-based source code, instead of. Uh, Letting it generate. But, so yeah. Astro on Twitch is asking, do you know about Butterfly Force? Well, I guess we're now <laughs> in the esoteric <laughs> force like, section. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't. What, uh, I'm curious. Though. Well, I have to say I know quite some funny forces, but they most of them just stop somewhere around create does. And I think this is just where the, where the system starts to begin f to make fun, because up until then, you just build oh, a calculator which does RPM. So that's that's true. Maybe we should try and do a group implementation in Mondrian. Or in Piet. That's, that's, uh, it, yes, it supports more Piet. colors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will only take you 12 years to figure out where to change the pixel to find the bug in your code. There, it, there's a one... <laughs> There's a wonderful, um, there's a wonderful uh, esoteric language called Unlambda, um, which uses the SKI Combinator calculus, which I believe is Turing complete. Plus, mm -hmm. it has yes, it uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it has um, it has like I/O functions in addition to that. Um, so basically, if you want to write your program as a as a long sequence of S's, K's, I's, and dots, then like that's the language for you. <laughs> I've no idea what a fourth implementation in that would look like, but it's theoretically possible. Yeah. So uh, Astro I... was referring to the XKCD comic uh, for uh, Butterfly Force. This is how you would implement it, obviously. Uh, let's... Not I sure if, you, if you know that one. Butterfly Force. What is meant? Uh, I just put it on the screen right now, Martin. Aha. 
He he meant you know there is this discussion what the real pro uh, uh, editor is and the on, only real programmer is the one who lets a butterfly flap once. And then, all, because of the butterfly effect in the atmosphere, the cosmic rays will be directed to your hard mm -hmm. drive to have the correct mm -hmm. file on there. Okay. Yes. Uh, thought it had to do with the butterfly board. That's an old uh, Atmega board, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't Could know. Be. Yeah, yeah. But oh, and yeah, one one last thing while I'm on, I, I do a kind of micro lightning talk. Um, rot and minus rot like the worst words in fourth i can never remember which way around they are i use bury and exhume as my, uh, <laughs> as my alternatives. um because like it's obvious what's happening with the word rot and minus rot always i get i always get them wrong but so isn't is it is it a bit morbid to call them that way you can also call uh, it safe so and restore that, or something like that actually, no, but i I created an HTML preprogrammer language, which is on GitHub actually, called Funeral, um, which has <laughs> of course it is every, everything. Everything in it is uh, is from a certain point of view a unary function, so that's where the name comes from. Um, but like, there's lots of morbid jokes in that language, and bury and exhume were two of them. Um, but actually, from a point of view of what's happening to the stack um that's a it's actually a good mnemonic it's got good mnemonic value um i got, uh, I got a, a um there's um um alt stack ops uh script you can find on on uh, in my code um is like picture images a b c d and the permutation that the, that it, it's done i just saw some code the right. other day that yeah. was wrote wrote, wrote and I had to look, if, if you will, in that script to go and see. Oh, that's the same as minus wrote, and and but but uh, yeah, beyond the first couple, the first swap. Well, as a matter of fact, I've gone to using just a dollar sign for swap because that's that's the same as 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 the the APL commute, which was incredibly complicated compared to swap. <laughs> And because you've got infits you're dealing with, but but yeah, take a look at alt um, um, alt stack ops dot you know, and um, it's actually other people have made similar picture names for mm -hmm. for the stack op operations. Yeah, so A A C B and um, yeah. Uh, yeah A B uh, not A B C oh, oh, um, yeah. But I'll post, uh, the, I'll put, post the uh, link yeah. in the chat. Okay, yeah. No, that 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 would that makes sense as well, and is slightly less morbid than my uh, my approach. Mm. Okay. Another possibility is not to use rot and minus rot at all. <laughs> I like, like that one. Actually, use yeah. the return stack. Yeah, just just mm. pu um, uh, push to return stack. If and, you don't um, have already an object there, but then again, use Bern's object stack or use uh, 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 what you have suggested early have more stacks. Yeah, I would um, like an even an odd numbered to, stack to, that would be fun like to do. Then. Mm -hmm. I think you should do something like an even and an odd numbered stack just to, uh, you know, um, make some people angry. But uh, I seriously think that having more stacks uh, are always helpful. I actually use them in, in also in, in embedded ah. systems, maybe only for with, with up to five items. This is definitely a cool idea. I mean, two, two data sometimes, stacks. Sometimes I use free machine registers to store variables. Mm. This is an idea I uh, first saw in AM Forth by Matthias Trute. And uh, now on the RISC V, there are up about uh, 10 or 11 free registers not used by me, Crisp, so I can well, store the, the question would come up, why doesn't there. his code generator use them? Uh, he, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They only, uh, the upper registers are not used in vanilla code. Uh, I don't ah, know okay. what he meant by this. I, I, I didn't ask him. Chuck, Chuck Moore does something similar in his recent UHD fourth, uh, if I remember the talk correctly that he basically he's got the 16 um x86 64 registers 
uh, and each of them's mapped to an important variable, basically, to, to save trips to memory. Yeah, and for a long time, there uh, has been the A register or, or mm. the A in the the color fourth, yeah. And Stephen talked about that revised model quite a while ago. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, li I like the A register yeah, approach. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, Glyn, yeah, thank a, you very there's... much for picking up and uh, doing something with Seedforce. Uh, if you want to and have questions or want to collaborate, uh, then just uh, stay in contact with me. Okay, stay great. Yeah I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Awesome. Thanks. Sorry, Stephen, for interrupting. No, no, I, I was really going to say that those articles about extra registers were in Dr. Dobbs before it collapsed, but the the Dr. Dobbs website is still up and the articles are still there. Okay. Okay, uh, any other questions from Twitch or from here towards Glyn for his talk? Well, I think it's just great <laughs> to have Orgforce. Uh, I, I just have to give it a shot. You have to share some of that stuff. I'll, I'll dig out my old code base and see how uh, see how complete it is. Go but, ahead and yeah, do so. Definitely... 